about more about um, the other components in relational database. Again, we will just touch the surface of the relational database. Uh, so one thing we just mentioned is called index. So index, the purpose of index will speed up the query. Uh, so it is added data structure that is saved on the disk. And the index is similar like uh, when we read a book, uh, so we also have the index. So if you imagine that when we read a book, and if we want to check the word speed, or rapid, sorry, rapid, we just go to index, and we look, okay, find out rapid, and that is on page uh, 194. Okay, so by using index within a book, so we can um, identify, find out the data, or find out the word that we are looking for, and super, super fast. So we don't need to read all the single page of the book, you know, from the beginning and also till the end to find out this single word. So that is index. So that those in, this index is the additional pages that on this book. And that is similar of the index in our database. So index is built on the, in a database, it's built on those attribute values. So when we have those tables, like ID, uh, name, etc., uh, we also have the index. So index will tell you, okay, for example, we were looking for the Chris. It will tell you something like Chris is located on the student table, okay, and also on the first, first row. So something like that. Well, the, the reality of index will be more complicated, but it is something like that. So by having index, when we're making queries, the query will be super, super fast. Okay, so when you have a huge amount of the data. However, so you should not use add index to all the columns and also all the tables because on the other hand, it will also decrease the speed of updating, inserting or deleting the records. Because for example, if for the student table, every time when we need to insert new records, the database will need to update the index as well. So, so, uh, so every time when you're making queries, the index will be updated. So you just need to index the columns that you need. Okay. And key and identifiers. So key and identifiers are another important concept in relational database. So that means each single column or the combination of the columns are used to distinguish the rows in the tables. Okay, uh, so basically we have two types of keys. The primary keys is one or more columns that identify each rows in that table. Okay, for example, the student ID can be that primary key. And primary keys, you can only have one primary key in each table that primary case does not allow the null user, the null values must be unique and automatically be indexed. Okay, so primary case are always being indexed. We also have foreign case. Foreign case is a set of one or more columns that refers to the primary key in another table. Okay, so foreign case uh, is on a different table that referring the primary key on another table. You can have multiple foreign keys uh, in one table. It can be now and also allow duplicated values. So if multiple columns are used as a primary key or foreign keys, they are called multiple identifier. Okay, so let's see one example. So here we have two tables. Um, this is the people table. We have the people ID, first name, last name, date of birth, and a city ID. So city is where the people uh, is born, was born. On the city table, we have city ID, city name, and also a zip code. Okay. So now you can see on those two tables, each table should have a primary key. So which, which column should be the primary keys on those tables? So I would use people ID as a primary key on the people table and also city ID as a primary key on the city table. So those two columns are used to 
distinguish the rankers within each table. So CTA, B, C, they have different CT IDs. People A, B, C, they have different people IDs. And what is a form key? So form key is a column on the table that refers to a primary key on another table. Okay, so here we can define, okay, form key on the, the CT ID on the people table is now the form key on the people table, which refers to the CT ID on the CT table. Okay, so by doing that, the both tables are related. Okay, by doing that, both tables are related. So that is a that is the feature of the relational database. So what is the multiple identifiers? So in some cases, you can have multiple columns together as a primary key. So in this case, if I choose, okay, uh, people ID plus first name plus last name, all three together are unique, and I can use that three columns together as the primary key. So that is also allowed. <clears throat> All right, so that's enough for the relational database. Uh, so in addition to relational databases, we have those non-relational databases. So remember that for relational database, we save all the data in tables. So that is what we call the structure table, structure data. Okay, so that is structured data. We now have non-relational table databases that are used to store those semi-structured data. So relational table, relational database can only save structured, structured data that can be organized within tables. But nowadays, as data become more different type of, of the formats, so now we have some more non-relational database. Okay, so that can be on to save the semi-structured data. So that allow data redundant data and also in those non-SQL database or non-relational database. So those are the examples. So document store, that for example, that save data in a JSON format. Okay, so that's a document store. Uh, we also have the key value stores. So key value stores is a key column value in this curly bracket. Okay, so that is called key value stores. Uh, we also have graph stores. So graph stores is used to, for example, you, we, when we have the network structures, okay, like social network structures, and the relational database is not efficient to handle that type of data. So we have a very specific type of database called graph stores to store those, uh, those network data. We also have in-memory stores. So in-memory stores that give you very fast uh, performance, however, you know that all the data are stored in the memory, not on the hard disk. We also have the other types of the, uh, databases. <clears throat> okay, so now let's go back to AWS. On AWS, they provide different type of the databases. Uh, the Amazon RDS is the solution for relational database. Okay, so for relational database. You can see that support the different engines. So they have Aurora that support MySQL and also PostgreSQL. And they also have the community version and also commercial version. So for the commercial versions, so you have to pay for the license uh, to use Oracle and also uh, SQL Server. <clears throat> they also have the key value stores. Um, for example, the solution is called DynamoDB. Remember that in addition to Amazon uh, solutions, all those other type of databases, we can also find out alternative solutions that are not provided by Amazon. Uh, for example, in the document stores, uh, AWS provides the Amazon document DB. And actually, the most popular document, uh, document store is called MongoDB. MongoDB. So I'm not sure have you heard that one. So if you take my data mining class, so we are talking more about MongoDB. Uh, AWS also provides in-memory stores and graph stores. They also have the search, time series, and also ledger. So those are something 
this is pretty new. So to be honest, um, I'm not sure what this one is. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so those are the different type of the um, database solutions that are provided by AWS. So in our class, we will only talk about Aurora. So that is the relational database solution on AWS. So that is the RDS, so Amazon RDS. Okay, so what is Aurora? So Aurora is a, is a solution provided by Amazon that for the relational database or SQL database. Uh, so for Aurora, you can have up to 15 replica servers for read-only traffic and also failover. Okay, so um, it is a fully managed relational database instance. So that means everything is in the cloud. You don't need to install those uh, infrastructures uh, in your local environment. So what you need to do is just open your browser and also log into AWS and set up your relational database. So we are going to do that in today's lab. For Aurora, they provide two types of engines, MySQL and also PostgreSQL. So that means uh, if you are familiar with MySQL or PostgreSQL, so you can, you can choose the engine that you like and you can treat Aurora as a PostgreSQL or MySQL database. Okay, so now let's talk about what does replicas mean. <clears throat> so Aurora actually not provide you a single instance, they provide you an DB cluster. Okay, they provide you a DB cluster. So when you set up a Aurora uh, RDS service server, so do you have multiple instances? <clears throat> you can choose uh, just have one instance which will be the primary instance that handle the read and also write. So user can update data to this instance and also read data outside of this instance. You can also provide multiple replica servers. So that means that you have, uh, this is the replica and also this is another one, this is another one. So in this example, we have one uh, mask server or the write instance. And we have three, three read instance. Okay, so one write and also three read. Okay, so in that case, the user, okay, can read write data into this write instance. So they can only write data to this primary instance. The instance will be uh, to the data volume, and the data will be synchronized across multiple servers, okay? And the user can read data from those multiple servers. Okay, so why do we want to do that? So there are multiple reasons. The first is that to fail over. Okay, so what if your master instance fail? Okay, so that happened, right? That could happen. So if your master instance failed, like in this one, so in this AZ1, AZ8, and your server in AZB or AZC will become master to receive the data from the users and also to return the results to the users. Okay, so your business will not be interrupted. Okay, so that is one reason. So it will to handle the failover. The second reason is that, so suppose that you have um, very huge uh, requests or queries from all over the world, okay, from multiple users. So by doing that, so you can write data into this master and also user one can read from this server, user B can read from this server, and the user, the other user can read from this server. So that the, the user will have access will have more access so that uh, just give you them the, the better performance. So when they make queries, we have more uh, instance to handle those queries, okay? So that we can support more users. 